happiness is beautiful It's a kind reality Happiness is the highest good Happiness is free So let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Welcome to The Happiness Show. This is George Ortega. I'm here to talk about happiness because happiness is, always has been, and always will be the point of it all. Today's topic is how profit donation capitalism can help make poor people happier. Okay, we've, we've gone through a lot of programs where we basically say that money, for most of us, doesn't make a difference in terms of our level of happiness. You know, above the poverty line, um, whether we have fifty thousand uh, dollars, a hundred thousand, one hundred fifty thousand, one hundred fifty million, it just simply doesn't matter, you know, because happiness, really, in a certain sense, isn't about um, money above the poverty line. But below the poverty line, it's a much different story. It's much more difficult to be happy when one is like lacking one's very basic necessities, like food. So this program is going to be devoted to explaining how what I call profit donation capitalism can help generate the funds to help the poor, you know, not just the poor though, it can, can also be applied to other uh, important causes like medical research and the environment and education. All right, um, so let me explain a bit um, about the problem. About, you know, over half of our world, about three billion people, over three billion people, live on less than two American dollars a day. Now, when I say two American dollars a day, I mean, you know, I don't mean that like, you know, two, do two dollars in their countries could buy a lot more. I'm saying that, you know, what we can buy here for two dollars is what they live on each day, okay? Um, over 800 million people in our world are malnourished, meaning they don't get enough <coughs> calories and basic nutrition to meet their even minimum uh, daily requirements. And every day, over um, 20,000 people die of hunger and malnutrition. And 18,000 of these people that die every day of hunger and malnutrition are children. Okay, so again, this episode is really about using profit donation capitalism to help them get the food they need to, to live the lives that they should be living and to be as happy as they really deserve to. Um, Okay, and again, profit donation capitalism can also help us fund uh, other important causes in the world like medical research and education and the environment and so many other causes. All right, um, so before we begin to explore um, what profit donation capitalism is about and how it works, I want to just go over what the problem is re with regards to the poor um, because it's really about money. Um, unfortunately, we in the richer countries in the world are just very greedy and very selfish. Um, as nations, a as governments, um, we simply refuse to help them. Uh, we refuse to, to help to end world hunger. Um, and I say we refuse because it really would cost us only 1% of, of our income as a, as a nation, you know, for each of the, the rich countries in the world to end world hunger. And um, we, we refuse to even give that, you know. Um, the United States is actually one of the stingier countries of the richer countries in the world. Um, unfortunately, our churches are too busy with other issues like, you know, fighting with gays against um, their rights or trying to bring religion into schools. You know, there, there are other issues that they're concerned with, and unfortunately they don't invest much time or effort in, um, in the um, in, in the cause of the poor, you know, relative to the time and effort they invest in these other issues. And the media really doesn't um, help either, you know. Um, unfortunately, the media in this country is run and owned by the rich, and, um, and the rich really simply don't have much compassion um, for the needs of the poor. They're, they tend to, as a population, be um, not as generous with their charitable donations and uh, just simply more callous towards the, the needs of people in need. Um, and so like what happens is when, when there's a famine, the, the media might devote a certain amount of attention to it for a while and display graphic images that um, 
has people you know appeals to people's compassion so people will help for a while but then you know the media unfortunately never gets into the issues of why these famines occur because like these famines generally are not because there's not enough food being grown there or because of of you know other things like war and all generally um the the hunger in this world is about the great dispa disparity between uh the rich and the poor in this world um so you know in a certain sense the rich are really the heart of the problem of um, the hungry people, the, the over 20,000 people that die each day from, from hunger and malnutrition. Okay, and as an example of this, um, for example, in 2000, I, would, I just want to give an example of the great disparity in wealth, how much rich people have versus how little the poor people of this world have. In 2001, there were about 497 billionaires in the world, and their total worth was about one and a half trillion dollars. Now that's more than the, the, the combined incomes of the over three billion poorest people in the world. You know, and you know, personally, I, I don't really have anything against rich people being rich or having money, but when there's 20,000 people dying every day from hunger, from malnutrition, then yeah, that's a serious problem, and it's just, it's really unconscionable. Um, Karl Marx um, and others had said that um, capitalism basically tends to um, make rich people richer and poor people poorer. And, um, you know, capitalism does, um, does a lot of good. You know, it, it has raised the standard of living for many people throughout the world, but unfortunately it does generate this great income disparity. Um, I just want to go through a long-term trend that shows that over the years the rich have gotten much richer while the poor have at the same time gotten much poorer. In 1820 the the difference in income between the richest and the poorest were that the rich of this world were about three times, the rich countries of this world were about three times richer than the poor countries in the world. By 1913 the rich countries of the world were about ten times richer than the poorest countries in the world. By 1950, the rich countries in the world were about 35 times richer than the poor countries in the world. By 1973, the rich countries in the world were about 44 times richer than the poorer countries in the world. By 1992, the rich countries in the world were 72 times richer than the poorest countries in the world and this trend is continuing to go in the same direction. So so the key to understanding um, why profit donation capitalism, which I'll be explaining um, soon, is very important is because the rich, the rich countries of the world, the rich people of the world basically earn their money by selling products. This is so important to understand. They didn't ask for donations for money. People didn't just give them the money. They sold people products and their riches are the profits from these products. Okay, that's extremely important to understand when you when you understand profit donation capitalism because basically profit donation capitalism is about concerned people, people who are concerned with the poor, with the environment, with social rights, with education, Profit donation capitalism calls upon these people to create businesses that sell products that compete with the products being sold by the rich people of this world. And then these, these new profit donating businesses would donate 100% of the profit from the sales of these products to feeding the hungry, to caring for the environment, to educating people who need education, to really tending to the needs of, of the entire world. But again, for this show, this show is mainly about feeding the poor, because I think that's probably the, you know, um, it is so difficult to be happy when, when one is poor and, and doesn't have food. And so this is really the greatest problem in the world. There's like, again, over three billion people that, that are very poor. And, um, and you know, profit donating businesses can contribute so much to these people. So what happens then is it stores shoppers are giving, given a choice. They can buy, for example, a ketchup from a company that's going to use its profits to make itself richer. It's going to make the stockholders richer and the company owners richer. Or 
they can use they can the shoppers can buy this same ketchup from a company that's going to donate all of its profit to world hunger relief or to education and to the environment okay um when we first think about this we we might conclude that you know it would be impossible for a company to stay in business while donating 100 percent of its profit to charity to you know to different causes um well recently over the last several months i've looked through the internet and i found over fifty of these companies throughout the world that have been doing business um, really for decades and in many cases um, the best known of these is Paul Newman, actor Paul Newman's company called Newman's Own and Newman's Own started selling salad dressing in 1982 at, at this time donating all of its profits to charity and it's expanded its line of products to I think over 40. It even has a, a Newman's Own Organics. It's run by Paul Newman's daughter, um, Nell Newman. And since 1982, not only has Newman's Own been able to stay in business, donating 100% of its profits to charity, it's been able to donate about $150 million to charity during that time. Now the, the oldest and the, the by far the most successful profit donating business in the world is the Army and Air Force Exchange Service that was created in 1907. Now this, this service basically um, sells products to military personnel. You know, it basically sells them products and services. They even have stores that do this. And then they use 100% of the profit from these products to help soldiers in need because a lot of times our government simply doesn't provide soldiers the income they need and, and the medical service that they need uh, even after um, they become uh, injured or rehabil rehabilitated um, while in active duty. So, so basically um, this Army and Air Force Exchange Service which really is a profit donating business is, um, donates 100% of their profit to these soldiers and just to give you an idea of how amazingly successful this company is over the last 10 years it's donated 2.5 billion dollars to soldiers in need so again this this shows that not just can these companies thrive while do donating all of its profit their profits to charitable causes to good causes but they can you know generate billions of dollars in this way okay um many people are familiar with unicef of course and um many people may not know however though that functioning in a sense they have a, a special arm that sells products that, that functions as a profit donating business that since 1949 um they have um they have donated over one billion dollars to children's charities um, just by selling um, greeting cards. Um, there, are other, there are other celebrities besides, um, um, besides Paul Newman that, that have um, created profit donating businesses. Um, prince Charles, um, the, the Prince of Wales, has a company called... Um, Keith, could you give me the, the middle camera, uh, the, this other camera here? The, the main camera, thanks. Um, uh, Prince Charles has um, created a company called um, Ducci Originals that sells um, biscuits, basically, you know, and they donate 100% of their profits to charity. Um, Robert Kennedy Jr. and a partner created uh, Keeper Springs that sells bottled water, and they donate 100% of their profits to environmental causes. Um, Don Imus, the radio personality, created Imus Ranch Foods, and they donate 100% of their profits to um, to children who have um, who have um, different illnesses. Um, now, it's it's important to know that most profit donating businesses are not owned by celebrities, but celebrities I think would be great owners of them. Uh, there are many. Again, there are over 50 that I know of. There. Um, they sell insurance, um, their investment companies, the internet service, they sell telephone service, um, they sell computer products, they sell um, travel companies. Um, you know, unfortunately many people are not aware of them because, you know, they, um, they have limited advertising budgets. 
Um, but these these profit donating businesses really um, really have donated a lot of money to to thousands of different um, causes uh, throughout ag again the last um, two decades. Some are even political. Um, Freedom Telecom uh, Telecom is a telephone company that donates. Um, they sell you know bas basic telephone service. They donate 100 percent of their profit to the pro-life movement and abortion. And then there's another company called Green Century Funds that sells mutual funds, and they donate all of their profits to environmental protection. Okay, now I've found, you know, over 50 of these companies on the internet. The idea, the basic idea bef behind profit donation capitalism is that there could literally be thousands, tens of thousands of companies like these selling tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of products that compete with the products sold by the rich. So that um, basically that would mean that when shoppers go shopping, you know, on a regular basis uh, in, in their, uh, as part of their routines, they could just be um, buying products that not that don't make the rich richer, but that that um, enrich the lives of everyone. That's the key. That that you know we have over 50 examples of these companies that are thriving, donating billions of dollars to important charities, buy selling products. And if you have tens or hundreds of thousands of new companies selling tens and hundreds of thousands of new products that compete with the, the products sold by the rich, we can generate billions of dollars, especially to end world hunger, to feed the poor people in the world, but also to, um, again, to clean our environment, to educate our people, to, to um, enhance our medical research. Okay, now the, the, the key is, of course, that you know, these, product, these companies should basically be able to sell the products at an equal price to their competitors, and of the same quality. Now, with so many products, especially in the supermarket, that's very easy. You know, that's just so many products are, rep, um, are easy to replicate, you know, in, in manufacturing. Okay, now then the main question that we're left with is how we get these companies started. You know, because how, how do we get them created? Um, okay, basically, there has to be an international appeal to philanthropists and um, to philanthropic organizations throughout the world. We have to just basically get the word out that if these companies are created and shoppers are given the opportunity, opportunity to donate to important causes every time they shop by buying their products, shoppers will support these products um, extremely well. Just to give an example, I, I did a survey um, this is the survey I did about over 10 years ago. I asked people if their supermarket offered them products that are equal in price and value to the products that they now buy, and that they knew that the profits from these products would be used to end world hunger. Would these shoppers buy these new products? And 92 out of the 100 um, shoppers that I asked this question said yes, that they would buy the products. Now. Um, Perhaps m some of those wouldn't, you know. But even a very conservative estimate of, let's say, 40 or 50 percent of shoppers buying these products is a great market share that could make any of these companies um, hugely successful. Okay, so um, now as an example, like for example, like Care, you know, the Care could sell us products, and and you know they would be donating all their profits to. Um, to help hungry people um, throughout the world, or the United Way could be selling us products, and they could use their 100% um, of their profits to help poor people in the United States, because you know we we're the richest country in the world, but we have the greatest disparity between the rich and poor of any country in the world. So, um, are basically, you know, companies could be formed by these organizations, by individuals that do this. And really, the, the key is promotion. I've created a website um, where I go into this um, concept and explain it with a lot of text. And I have a list of these over 50 um, companies, profit donating companies, that um, donate 100% of their profits to various causes on the website, in, in including their contact information. And the address of the website is www profitdonationcapitalism.org 
Remember, it's a dot org, not a dot com. And so you can log on there and, and find out much more information about this. And also, you know, you can find out how to help. Because, like, for example, if you're in, acad in, in academics, if you're a professor, if you do um, economics research or marketing research, you could certainly help conduct these studies to determine how well shoppers would support these kinds of businesses. If you're in the not-for-profit not field, um, you could certainly um, encourage your not-for-profit to start selling these, profit, these products. Or if you're a journalist, you could certainly promote this concept through writing articles about it. So there, there are very many ways that, that all of us could help um, promote this. We can really change the world with this. You know, unfortunately, um, our world is run by the rich. Here in the United States, um, and I say unfortunately because we have great problems in the world. You know, 20,000 people are dying each day from, from hunger. Um, our, um, our environment is just like, it, it's not nearly as clean as it should be. We have a lot of problems, and, and unfortunately with, with so much money in the hands of, of a rich population, it doesn't really care so much for the rest of the world. They're too concerned with their own um, selfish interests. That money is not being spent as, as well as it should. So um, basically we can end this great income disparity with profit donation capitalism because as these profit donation businesses make money by selling products and then funding these important causes, these rich people will, will be getting less rich. And again, you know, I say that rich people rule the world because, um, for example, in our elections in the United States, um, almost invariably, um, Anytime you have two candidates running for an, an office, the candidate who raises the more money will win. That's almost a given rule. Um, the rich also control the media, so they're not going to be talking about what, what needs to be done in the world, um, you know, like feeding the poor, because you know, they're afraid that if they talk about that, if they present those problems in a serious way, they're the ones who have the money to do it, and they'll be called upon to feed the, the poor and to help the environment through higher taxes and also. So again, the rich um, don't want to present this through the media because they, they know that they'd be um, paying for much of what needs to be done. So, um, so again, um, th this profit donation capitalism can reduce the power of the rich in controlling this world by reducing their wealth, and that's extremely important. Okay, um, now, again, um, profit donation capitalism really can change the way we shop. You know, rather than going into stores now and just selecting products and knowing that the profits from these products are going to be making somebody who's already too rich richer, we can know that every time or many, many times that we buy a product, we know that the profits from the sale of these, this product will be going to feed hungry people or to help the environment or to help with human rights or to help educate people or to, to help with medical research or so many um, other important causes. Basically, profit donation capitalism gives us an opportunity to fund the important causes in the world without it costing us anything. Because, you know, if we want or we need a product, we're going to be spending money for it anyhow. So it, every time we buy a product and we help end world hunger, we help the environment, it's not costing us anything. Basically, the people that it's costing something is the competitors of these companies that are losing money because naturally they're not selling as many products. Um, but, and that's fine because most of these, pony, these um, company owners have much more money than they need in any event. And they're not using it um, humanely. They're not using it compassionately. They're not using it wisely. So, but again, the key point is this profit donation capitalism allows shoppers to help fund important causes without it costing them anything. Okay, um, again, um, you know, if you log on to the website, um, profitdonationcapitalism.org, you can find out much more information about this. I, I list, um, categorize this information in, in frequently asked questions. I provide lists of the profit donating businesses by cause, list of the profit donating businesses by the products they sell. And again, there are over 50 businesses in the world that now, that today, are selling products and donating 100% of their profits to different charities. And they're succeeding. They're thriving. So, so we know that it works. Okay, profit donation capitalism can 
raise the money that we need to feed the hungry people in the world and we can do this without raising taxes we can do this without starting wars we can do this in the most civilized compassionate intelligent way possible in a way that doesn't cost shoppers anything it doesn't cost our government anything it's simply a transfer of, of riches from the very rich people in the world to these people who need the, the money to, 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 to live, to, to eat. Okay, and of course, as, as, these people, um, as these people get fed, they will get happier. You know, this, this show is about um, happiness. And it's, it's, of course, not a kind of a show I'm accustomed to doing because um, it's not about feeling good, per se. It's about something that's very, very serious. It's, it's about a way of, of, of helping people in great need. In a, in a sense, of course, it is about happiness because, um, again, you have three, over three billion people in the world who live on less than two American dollars a day and you have over 20,000 people who are dying every day from hunger and malnutrition. And under that, those conditions, it's extremely difficult to, to be very happy. So, you know, the reason I'm doing this show, the reason I'm promoting profit donation capitalism is because it is such a powerful way to get the money and to, to get the means to these people to feed them so that they can have the food and then they can have the housing, whatever kinds of basic needs they have to then be able to enjoy their rightful happiness. Again, in order for this to succeed, um, we need to basically promote it. So if you're, if you're a journalist, you know, I, I encourage you to write about it. If, um, if you're an academian, you know, study it, study the marketing side of it, study the advertising side of it, study the economic side of it. You know, just it's, it's, a, it's an issue. It's, a, it's, it's something that needs to be promoted. It's an idea that is extremely powerful, but it's, it's only, only as powerful as we use it. So, so, and the more people know about it, the more of these companies will be formed, and the more they'll be able to help, um, again, the people who most need our help to, to, f to eat and to become, become much happier. Okay, well, that's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. In the future, we'll explore other topics designed to help us better enjoy life. This is George Ortega saying, be good, think well, feel very happy, and I hope you join us again next time here on The Happiness Show. Happiness is powerful, it's our underlying need Happiness is why we live each day, happiness is destiny So let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy